watching the football. <laughs> yeah, we've got a real North American feel to the field in action this evening. Things are really starting to heat up in this tournament, thanks largely to Damon Hetter, who we saw in action this afternoon, of course. Oh, no Australian fans. This is pretty much what his walk-on was like, wasn't it? But he has finally brought his floor and Euro Tour form to the big stage in the last few months. Yeah, look, Damon Hetter had been having a tough time at the big TV stages, but he has come here to the biggest stage of all and annihilated a two-time world champion. Damon Hetter has still got gears yet to find, but that 3-0 win against Adrian Lewis means that he is in the running. Simon Whitlock says he's going to win this title. He predicted that when they won the World Cup together, and he's made the perfect start. Yeah, one of the best performances we have seen so far in this tournament, though, has come from a Belgian, and I believe we've got quite a few Belgians out there today. There they are, making all the noise, of course. Dimitri Vandenberg last night with a 97 average, and he won it in spectacular form. This 1-6-4 checkout to get over the line, superb. Look, I love Lawrence Delorg, and I think he's absolutely brilliant, but he had no answer to the dream maker. He's changed back to darts that were similar to his old ones. Something seems to have clicked. He's still got to get better if he's going to win the title, but he was happy with that performance, and that should worry everyone else, because the first half of this year, Dimitri Vandenberg was right up there in the top four, five, six players in the world on a consistent basis. Now look, in a few moments' time, two of you are going to get the opportunity to have a go at the bullseye challenge. But first of all, there we are, everyone's excited about that. First of all, Nathan Aspinall. Any Asp fans in here tonight? I've got a feeling they'd cheer anything I said. Even if I asked if they were a fan of you, they'd give you a cheer right now. That is proof that they will cheer absolutely anything at this moment in time. But let's have a look what happened when Nathan Aspinall and Lisa Ashton took on the Bullseye Challenge. Hello and welcome to the Bullseye Challenge. Joining me today not only is Nathan Aspinall, but Lisa Ashton. Guys, you've got 90 seconds on the clock to hit as many bullseyes as you can. One point for the green bit, three for the red. Are you ready? Yep, let's do it. This is the Bullseye Challenge. Yep. Let's go, nice. Lisa. Okay, 90 seconds on the clock. Ready, set, go. Straight in the bullseye. Yeah. Seven. Look at that, seven. Oh, no. All right, going lovely. On to 12 already. Bullseye for Lisa. Yep. 15. Two. 17. One. One. Up to 22. 40 seconds left, guys. Two. Four. Oh, 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 oh. Out. <laughs> oh no. There we go, three in the green bit, up to twenty nine. Two. Fight, gone. 31. <laughs> Last starts. And there we have it. Oh, the time is up. Oh. Oh. Oh, the last one's <laughs> in the bullseye. The time red gone. 31 points. Absolutely smashed yes. it. Well done. Well done. There we go. There we have it. Our two pros have shown us how it is done, but now it is the turn of the fans. Ladies and gentlemen, give our two Belgian fans a big round of applause. Dan Dawson, over to you. Yes, we are down by the board here. I am joined by our two Belgian darts super fans. What are your names and where are you from? My name is Dries and I'm from uh, Russelare. Jonas and I'm from Russelare. There we go, give it up for the Belgian lads. Is this your first time at the Ali Pali? Yes, very first time. What do you make of it? It's uh, fantastic. Uh... It is fantastic, you're quite right. Do you know what I'd make? 
would make it more. Do you know what would make it more fantastic? A working microphone, but also owning this, a beautiful piece of kit. Touch it, feel it, imagine walking down the streets of Bruges wearing it. I didn't say smell it. However, you can do whatever you want with it if you do well enough in the bullseye challenge. I will ask you two to throw at the bullseye for 60 seconds, a minute. You have to hit the bullseye as much as you can. Three points for the bull, one point for the outer bull. If you score just three points, that's all I'm asking for, three points, you get a T-shirt each. Imagine that, walking down the road side by side in your matching T-shirts, you would be the envy of Belgium. If you send, if I'm just going to do this. There we go. I'm going to move away from the speaker. If you set the highest total we've had so far, and it's only five, that's all they've got to be. Only five. So if you get six points, good. What? Well, you know they're going to bullseye. The All the best. It turns out I can't even present this. Four tickets to any night of PDC darts of your choosing. What a prize. Give a reaction, Ali Pali. There we go. Who needs a microphone? My Belgian friends, you get 60 seconds throwing at the bullseye. Your time starts now. Off we go. Let's get some noise in the room for them. It's a good start. It's another good dart. But no. Let's keep it going, lads. You are 10 seconds. Oh, he's got the dart. That might cost valuable seconds. It doesn't matter. His mate is going to throw over his head. We have very little health and safety here. It does not matter. We are still searching for our first points. Remember, three points. That's only one perfect dart. They will get the T-shirts. We are still searching, though. We're approaching the halfway point in this one. And we are still searching for a first point. Oh, my! Another dart like that, and they go into pole position for a prize worth literally hundreds of pounds. Oh, that's so close. Ten seconds left, lads. One good dart, and you put yourself in with a chance. Can you find it? Three, two, one. Last dart. No! Oh, tragedy strikes for our Belgian competitors. Come and stand here, gentlemen. It's not the highest score, but you've got to be happy to have pinned the bullseye between you. Uh, very happy, yeah. You know what will make you even more happy? You get the T-shirts! Look at that! Look at that! I will take the darts back. They're only marginally more expensive than the T-shirts. But well played, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a round of applause. We have our first winners of the night here at Ali Pali. Abby. Yeah, maybe Mike Dedeca will take some encouragement from what he's just seen from those. I'm sure he was watching that. Next up, then, we want all of you guys to be giving us your predictions for how things are going to go. Visit the PDC's Instagram account to cast your vote for this evening's matches. But before we do that, we're going to have a look at what Stuart Pike thinks is going to happen this evening. Well, as you know, it's not often that Mark Webster and I agree on anything, but we do agree on all four selections tonight, starting with Mike De Decker, uh, the Belgian, to beat Jess Smith uh, of Canada. De Decker in decent form, actually, coming into the World Championships, but it may go the distance, 3-2 uh, De Decker to win. Next up, Scott Williams, the man in yellow. Ryan Joyce was nowhere near the World Championship not so long ago, rejuvenated by... Uh, a decent run, decent form at the Grand Slam, but I still think that Williams will have too much. Again, maybe the distance, 3-2, maybe 3-1, hedging the bets. Matt Campbell of Canada, without a shadow of a doubt, in really good form. Danny Baggish, who's made his name, of course, uh, in the North American Championships and also loves it over here, loves playing the Pro Tour. But Matt Campbell, for me, to win again 3-1. And then Nathan Aspinall starts his bid, obviously one of the fancied runners for the World Championship this year. Aspinall to beat Boris Krishmar 3-1. I think Krishmar will get a leg, but Aspinall the winner. Well, that's what Pikey thinks. We can take a look at what the fans think is going to happen. That first game of this evening's session, the fans actually think Jeff Smith is going to come through that one. How do you all feel? Who thinks Mike Dedeck is going to come through tonight? 
And that's without the Belgians. They've, they've gone. They've yeah, got the T-shirts yeah. and left. Belgians have absolutely scattered. Oh, no, there, they are. there they are. They're still there. Right then, Jeff Smith in this one. He has had a bit of a horror, hasn't he, of late? COVID has not helped him. He is fighting for his tour card right now. Look, if Jeff Smith loses this game, Jeff Smith might lose his professional status. And this is a man who has sacrificed a lot. You spent weeks and weeks and weeks stuck in quarantine hotels, flying back and forth between Canada and the UK and Europe. It has cost him thousands and thousands of pounds, but he has sacrificed all that to have a chance to stay on the tour and get a full two-year cycle. Win this game, he'll be safe. If he doesn't, he's in danger. A man who does have his tour card for next year, though, is Scott Williams. He's our second match of this evening session. Taking on Ryan Joyce, we know what Relentless can do here. He's done it on the Ali Pali stage before. Who do you see coming through this one? Look, Ryan Joyce had to come through the qualifier to get here, but he did do because he's in quite good form. He was brilliant at the Grand Slam of Darts as well. However, I think the bookies have got this wrong. They make Scott Williams as the underdog in this one. I think Scott Williams is going to do really, really exciting things in this sport. He doesn't have a tour card until next year when it starts. He's already won a senior title. He's going to stride about on that stage like he's Stringer Bell from The Wire. He is a seriously cool dude. He's a showman. And I think he might put on a show against Ryan Joyce. Yeah, really interesting that he is evens to come through in that second match. Third up then, we've got the American number one up against the Canadian number two. They, of course, know each other's games very, very well indeed. Yeah, they do. Danny Baggish in a similar position to Jeff Smith in that he needs to win, well, games, plural. He's got to win three games minimum if he's going to save his professional status. That piles a lot of pressure on the gambler, but when he's under pressure is usually when he performs best. However, Matt Campbell is a seriously good player. He is the better player, certainly right now, and I think the Canadian might edge it. And then our fourth and final match, the seed in action tonight is Nathan Aspinall. Any Asp fans? Yeah, lots of people looking forward to seeing the Asp up on that Ali Pali stage. A resurgent Nathan Aspinall, it has to be said. How far do you see him going in this tournament? Well, if he goes as far as he did at the Grand Slam and the Grand Prix, then Nathan Aspinall is going to reach the final here at Alexander Palace for the first time. However, if, ASP fans, you think it's going to be easy against big Boris Kritschmar, you might be in for a shock. Not only is he the only man in this field who could win the Cyrodiil Trophy and lift it above his head as if it were a toothpick, he is also an incredible darts player. I think he's going to have a breakthrough at some point. Nathan will be hoping it is not tonight that he shows everyone what he's capable of doing on a big stage. Yeah, darts fans, you are in for a thrilling night of darting drama here. I can see you're all ready. You're all looking forward to it. Enjoy night four of the World Darts Championships! It is quite simply the biggest show, the ultimate, the dream of so many. That's what I like to see. That's real darts. That is astonishing. That is a nine dart finish. What an experience! Something to behold. Oozing confidence up there. Raymond Van Barneveld simply had no answer. Magnificent MVG! Peter Wright is the champion of the world.